Gentlemen, whenever you're ready. Um, I'm Jordan. I'm Gavin. This is our further oral activity presentation. Okay. Uh, our learning goal today is the use of persuasive language through the use of advertising and persuasive appeals. Politicians use advertisement and persuasive language to influence voters and citizens to support them in their cause slash leadership. They do this by using words that sound good, but really are meaningless without a slam, which most politicians do not demolish. Oral predicted the use of persuasive language by politicians and leaders to obtain the goals and gather support, as shown in his essay, Politics in the English Language. Mm. Um, Politics in English Language is George Orwell essay from 1946. Uh, which criticizes the ugly and inaccurate written English of this time, examines the connection between political orthodoxies and the debasement of language. Um, it was originally published in the night, or April 1946 magazine, The Horizon. Um, and our quote pretty much about it is to make lies sound truthful and murder respectable and to give an appearance of solidity and pure will. And then what he meant by that is that Orwell was saying that if language is not necessary, straightforward, then it is vague. Okay. Uh, learning outcome is students will show an awareness of the potential for educational, political, or ideological influence of the media, so campaigns, or propaganda. Students will show the way mass media use language and image to inform, persuade, or entertain deliberate manipulation of the audience. These are two mini Google advertisements. Millions of dollars worth of city gas missing. Four point eight million dollars on free cell phones for city employees. Okay. okay. City officials traveling in luxury while libraries are being closed. I'm Wendy Grohl, and as controller, the waste I found could have paid to keep our libraries open and fund millions of dollars for after-school programs. As a parent with a child in our public schools, I'll be a mayor for all of LA, every school, every child. So in the first one, uh, Wendy was not wrong with all the things that was missing. She actually was rather supportive of what she was saying. But uh, in March of 19, or 2012, uh, the LA City government called, uh, audited more than $7 million in gasoline and other fuel went missing. So obviously that was a huge um, controversial point in her campaign, which really put the pressure onto other candidates and obviously the, the, government, the LA City Hall because all this gas was missing. Play the second one. Go back. Every part of LA deserves a better city government. I'm Wendy Grohl, and as city controller, I found a hundred and sixty million dollars in waste and fraud. Your tax dollars squandered. As mayor, I can stop the waste because I know where it is, and I'll use the savings for job creation, better schools and faster emergency response in every part of our city. We need a mayor for all of LA, so no one is left behind, and no one is forgotten. Okay, so in that one, she was saying that the, when she was city controller, she found $60 million of waste, and that as mayor, she wants to fix that. But Gruel is hypocritical because under her administration, she supported many of these actions. And in what she was saying about the cell phones and the $4.3 million, she actually took a cell phone and didn't fight against it. Although now she's saying she doesn't like it. And then she claims she will use the money to aid schools, libraries, etc. But she never actually says what she's going to do to help and where she's going to find this money. And here's a video that's criticizing Tony Gruel and her administration. I'm Wendy Gold. My campaign is full of contradictions. <laughs> Not cool, Wendy Gold. And as city controller, I found $160 million in waste and fraud. But Wendy Gold's own authors even called that number unrealistic. 
According to the Times, 80 million of that figure is based on projected revenues that are unrealistic, even according to the controller's office itself. She pretends to be this fiscal conservative from the valley. But Wendy Gruel backed huge raises for city workers when L.A. was already $243 million in the red. We are anticipating a, a big deficit uh, next year. And the cherry on top? One of Wendy Gruel's loudest cheerleaders is Barbara, don't call me ma'am, Boxer. And let's not confuse the American people. No man. Sure, Wendy Gruel recites the proper platitudes with the grace of an iron butterfly. As the architect of business tax reform uh, in 2006, uh, do things differently in the city of Los Angeles. And let's look at being uh, responsible in our pension system and sit at the table uh, with labor unions and business to say we need to address this crisis. Everyone knows it's sit down with the unions? Blah, blah, blah. Have one like that just sucks the life out of it, especially when it's so unconvincing. Or even worse, mere lip service. We have to work with the unions and work on some concessions as well to be able to balance our budget. And that must be the reason public employee unions have already contributed hundreds of thousands of dollars to a super PAC supporting Wendy Gruel. Because she's going to work with them to reduce their salary and their pension to help balance our budget. The Jan Perry camp is right when it says Wendy Gruel is bought and paid for by DWP's youth. Eric Garcetti's campaign is right when it calls Wendy Gruel the candidate of the status quo. And Kevin James is right when he says Wendy Gruel would be Antonio Villaraigosa's third term. That's a bad thing. Do y'all really want a blonde, white, effeminate version of Antonio Villaraigosa? This is a guy known for partying in Mexico with Charlie Sheen, cheating on his wife with a Telemundo anchor, and making an ass out of himself at the Democrats' national convention. In the opinion of the... Let me do that again. You're a fool if you vote for Wendy Gruel. Don't do it! Don't do it! I, um... I guess... Be cruel to Gruel on March 5th. <laughs> As you can see from that video, uh, they do use clips to manipulate what she says. And but now, after you watch the two first ads, you kind of have a sense: oh, she can do something. But once someone criticizes and actually finds the truth, you can you can see what she really stands for. Both Wendy and New Chaos Block put huge emphasis on money and budget, while neither of them talk about how to actually fix it. The author of this video compares to the previous mayor, Villa Grossa, who was corrupt and hated by many of the LA citizens. Villa Grossa who is currently mayor since 2005, is widely disliked by Los Angeles citizens who is partying, corruptness, and not focusing on the needs of this district. New Chaos Block compares her to Bill Garosa to make his viewers dislike her and not vote for her. Mm -hmm. So in conclusions, uh, politicians and persuasive language uh, use uh, persuasive language to make their ideas and plans sound better and to make their uh, opponents look worse. Um, politicians also use persuasive language to alleviate the wrongs they did in an attempt to shift the blame to another or even a competitor. Politicians will even go as far as to twist each other's words and manipulate citizens by portraying others as evil or corrupt. All in all, politicians use persuasive language to achieve their goals and aspirations, no matter the cost, and will even go as far as to manipulate voters and citizens to dislike their or predicted the use of persuasive language and the total mind manipulation of voters to make bad decisions and spread. And